good afternoon. Yes, indeed, <laughs> the, the plane finally, finally landed. There was a bit too much digital transformation in the planes from Swiss. So they couldn't fix a lot of the things. So yeah, sometimes too much transformation is not, is not, is not good. So a uh, quick introduction about myself. I'm the uh, Chief Information Officer at, uh, at Nestle. I joined Nestle in 2015. Uh, as Chief Digital Operation Officer at the time, and then I took the uh, CIO role. I've been almost 17 years in, uh, in P&G across Italy, Geneva, and uh, Cincinnati. So I'm sure I have a lot of friends in the audience, so we'll connect later. Um, what I wanted to do today is to do um, a bit of a sharing exercise on uh, uh, what we are doing in Nestle to drive in practice with pragmatic example some uh, 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 digital transformation for the company. I'm going to highlight some ingredients, not all of them, but some of those ingredients. And as a good ingredient, you need also a recipe. So I'm going to talk also about the, the, the recipe. And I hope to, uh, to give some uh, uh, tips, at least, or some real life uh, examples, because I'm sure a lot of you, a lot of us as leaders, people in the audience are being challenged every day about what are we doing for digital transformation? How do we do it? So let's see if I can offer a bit of um, <coughs> real, li real life examples. Um, quick intro on, uh, about, about Nestle. It's about 300,000 employees uh, worldwide, almost every country in, in the world. Um, a lot of brands, a lot of local brands. So a model that combines uh, global strong brands, but also very strong uh, local brands and a huge uh, industrial, let's say, factories uh, footprint, because in the food and beverage industry, you need to be also very, very close to the, to the mouths that, uh, that are in, uh, of your consumers. Um, one thing that we go quite proud of in the work that we, we are doing in Nestle uh, is to move fast, but also trying not to break things. You know the Facebook motto, in reality, we try to do fast, but also not to break too many things. And these are just some examples of the things that we are doing a bit of first <clears throat> in, the, in the industry. Uh, and I think this is important when, when you are in a company like P&G, Nestle, and many others, uh, this, uh, th this concept of being, of being ambidextrous, as uh, we were uh, listening to uh, earlier, being able to manage both things at the same time. Um, <clears throat> and then you might wonder, uh, what's going on, why te technology is so important for you know, a company that is doing food, beverages, um, and in the CPG world, what's really going on? Uh, this is an example from uh, CB Insights. This is from a few years ago. Um, there is a similar one for P&G and every other industry that you might be playing on uh, today. Um, companies are taking a bite out of your own portfolio every day, and there are, those are companies that use, that use technology to get to market very, very quickly. They have absolutely no barrier to entry. There is no legacy that you need to uh, cope with when you do it, and they're mostly using direct-to-consumer models, so they can get fast distribution, fast revenues, uh, and penetration very, very quickly. And this is happening to uh, Nestle as well. Uh, if you look at our numbers in the past few years, actually we're doing well, but where we lose share is not to the traditional competitors, it's to relatively small companies that go all in with new business models. So our challenge is how do we uh, use uh, technology to make a you know, big company to dance like a, like a startup. And we, we try in this cultural transformation that goes with it also to to really be very clear about the speed. You know, I probably have seen this type of quote before that in reality, in the future, either you are fast or you will, you're not going to be there. So uh, we try to combine speed with, uh, uh, of course, with the fact that we need to move with the, uh, with the right pace for a company like Nestle. <clears throat> and technology is very important because, you know, if you look consumer first, consumer at the center, consumer is boss. If you look at that, uh, technology is influencing consumers' mindsets every, every day. And they expect when you talk, when they talk, they interact, they have their first and second moment of truths with the, with the, with the, with the, with the products, that technology is going to be there to, to, to have a role. Um, the other saying in the industry, I'm sure you have heard it from uh, 
um, Mark Andreessen, founder of Netscape, but also one of the most successful VCs, is that software is now eating the world. And the question is, if software is eating the world, then every company is somehow a, co uh, a software company. I don't, um, I don't know if there's somebody that now is working in banking. Banking today is mostly about software with a license to operate in banking in a country. So how do, how do we translate this for a company that at the, that the end is about inventing, producing, shipping, delivering, and servicing physical, physical goods. So what, what is technology going to do for that? And what is the role of technology in the future? So I'm trying to bring now a few examples of what we're doing with my team, the information technology team in, uh, in Nestle, to make this, uh, this uh, happen. From an organization perspective, uh, as you can imagine, we have uh, quite a lot of scope to handle class classic, let's say, transactional uh, landscape, more than 300,000 users. Um, we do quite a lot in, uh, in marketing, with marketing tech, uh, websites. We have uh, also, compared to other um, uh, CPGs, we do quite a lot on, in direct-to-consumer as well. We have more than, more than six, seven billions of, cons of uh, uh, sales uh, going through uh, direct-to-consumer direct to uh, today. So quite a, quite a big landscape to manage. Um, of course, we want to run very safe operations. Uh, and we want to use analytics as, as much as possible, and we work with a lot of, lot of partners. All of that to say that exercises of digital transformations in a company are a lot about orchestrating, how you orchestrate and juggle things together. Don't believe people that come and tell you, oh, I have a magic recipe with no risk for success in, in digital transformation. And I'll show um, so let's see how we cook this transformation. Of course, this is going to be a food, a food recipe. First of all, you, you, you remember it from the OPNG times, start with the end in mind. Okay, so one, one thing we did last, uh, last year is to uh, create a fictitious HBR cover that we hope to see next year. Basically saying, how do we want somebody like HBR to feature the work that we are doing and how do we want to be talked about with this end in mind. So give a vision that people can identify themselves with. Um, then we, we, we looked at the ingredients that we need to put together. And again, today is going to be uh, a bit of a simplified set of ingredients, but let's see what they are. So this is the, this is the recipe, six ingredients that we'll, I will go through. Uh, the recipe is difficult, it's a five-star uh, recipe. Uh, and it gets very messy, but by all means, please do try this at home, okay? It's, uh, it's something that can be done. Uh, one important principle as well for us working in, uh, in, you know, in corporations, there is always the tendency to be very prescriptive, very top-down uh, on, on many, many things. One thing that really works well in digital transformation exercises is to bring this concept of the freedom in a box. So what are the boundaries that you define? What are the modules that you provide? And how you empower people to recombine some of the things that they, uh, that they need? So let's see, it. Let's see the uh, ingredients. The first one is really about innovation. Uh, no, no mystery, but importantly, innovation at the core and at the edge. You see a lot today of innovation that happens at the edge, a lot of stories that get told, a lot of press releases, uh, a lot of shiny objects, but not much that actually makes it back to the core of the company. So the trick is how you bring the core and the edge uh, together to, to work in, uh, in, uh, in, a, in a proper way, and the edge improving the core, because if you don't improve the core, you don't have the machine to bring the revenues and the real, the real results. So, um, one, I'm going to show some example. One thing we have done, we have created, this is already uh, four years ago, something called Ingenius, your inside genius. This is a platform, it's an internal platform where we allow our own employees to, uh, in a bottom-up way, to come up with good ideas, functional-related, business-related, product-related, um, and this is, this is going really, really well. It's our kind of internal crowdsourcing platform. We have more than 40,000 employees that have interacted with the platform, uh, and more than 3,000 ideas that have been worked through the, through the ranks. We have you know, kind of a very simple uh, innovation funnel, we would call it in, in the past. 
Uh, one thing that we have introduced as well is the fact that there is moments where people ask for funding with, uh, with a pitching session. We coach people on how to, uh, how to pitch for, for success, to refine the ideas. Uh, and also, we make sure that we get to minimum viable products that get then tested and uh, brought to life in real markets. So I'm going to show an example. This is the shop that comes out uh, from that process. So there is an online shop with all the things that are ready industrialized and that, that, are, that are now adopted in, uh, in the company. In this case, uh, I selected something around uh, physical logistics, but we work with all the, all the different functions for, for that. Uh, the other thing we're doing in, you know, in true spirit of uh, open innovation and connect and develop, uh, we launched a platform called Henry and Nestle. So Henry, Henry Nestle was the founder of Nestle, the quintessential real startup guy of 150 years ago. So how do we create a platform for startups uh, to work with us? So we, uh, we publish uh, challenges, we put some money on the table to, uh, to help uh, uh, people to come forward, and we work, for, we work on, uh, or we ask, let's say, to, to get contribution to work on things from sustainability to technology to uh, education and so on. So quite a, quite a good imp big importance on, on, on innovation. Of the various other things around technology, the one I wanted to bring up is this concept of automation, artificial intelligence, and, and conversational uh, experiences, because this is quite, let's say, well known now in, in the industry, uh, and I want to give some indication of what works and what, uh, what doesn't work. So, um, conversational brand engagements are ways to talk to consumers in an in a asynchronous way. So instead of people waiting on the line or you trying to message them on, uh, on, uh, on, on, on email, create a channel, in this case is a messenger, but you can do it, we do it on WhatsApp, we do it on WeChat in China, uh, we do it on uh, every, every type of messaging platform. Uh, and this is a great advantage. Consumers can stop the conversation, suspending, go do, do something else, and they can come back when it's the right moment for them. So, you keep the conversation going in the right way. Um, what we've done here, we have uh, created, a, and here you, you see some examples rolling around, uh, you have Nespresso, some of our pet care brands, uh, you have an example for coffee again, and for recipes. We've created uh, a team that is able to translate those experiences into real chatbots. And we have, I think, 30, 35 of those going on now. This is one thing to do very quickly to experiment on how consumers react to this type of uh, uh, channel for, for your brand. So I can only recommend that. The other thing we are doing, I'm not covering with an example today, is also the fact that voice has become a channel of uh, preference, a channel of, ch of choice for us to talk with uh, consumers, especially with the service mindset. So we have also quite a lot going on with Alexa, with Google Home, and, and the Asian players on, uh, on this. So again, if you have not done it yet, experiment with voice, because voice uh, is a very different channel. The brand equity, the brand essence needs to be uh, adapted to the voice channel. It's a, it's a different type of character that you need to bring up. Um, the other, the other thing that I encourage experimenting on is, is the concept of augmenting uh, reality. So one, one of the examples we, uh, we have been working on is, uh, uh, among many, is how do we help consumers to choose the right products for them with simple visual interactions ways. Uh, in this example, you have a, it's a kind of gondola end or let's say a promotional unit where through AR, this is a normal iPad, you can do it with any iPhone, there is no special hardware needed. You can have recommendations uh, going for, for consumers, so knowing who you are, what is the right, uh, um, uh, the right product uh, for you, additional information about the brand. Uh, and another thing that is very interesting in the food space is not just to recommend what is good for you, but also to exclude what is not good for you for, you know, it could be the dietary rest restriction, could be, you know, medical, medical conditions. So one thing that we do, yeah, you can see it here, we basically blank out, this is an example where you blank out some of the shelves so that your first moment of truth is actually very guided in a, in a, in a certain way. And the nice thing of this one is that you can fully personalize to the profile of the, 
uh, of the consumer or, or, the, uh, or the shopper. Um, another example on education, this is how, uh, I know it's difficult to believe, but people need to know how to cook instant noodles. So <laughs> if you don't know how to do it, we can give you a AR experience that says basically you boil the water and you put them in. So, but this is very important. <laughs> This is very important for college students, so yeah. Um, and, and <laughs> another thing that is also quite, uh, uh, quite interesting is how you use technology to connect, okay? And you hear a lot about uh, Internet of Things and capabilities. Uh, in Nestle, also, we have the luxury of not just having physical product, but a lot of machines, like coffee machines, like Nespresso, that we can use with a connect, in a connected fashion. So we do uh, quite, quite a lot of that. Uh, one thing that uh, uh, we do, though, is to get a lot of data behind. So part of my pitch here is that don't just go and follow the fad of connecting objects. You have to do it for a reason. I'm going to show a quick example. This is an example of one of our uh, connected machines in, uh, in Japan uh, where uh, we can read real time, basically, uh, what time of day the coffee gets brewed, what is the recipe that gets done, uh, of course, in all the CRM data. And very interestingly, the other thing we can do, we can, uh, uh, yeah, this is another example on how we, we see the consumption, but we can also do a lot of proactive maintenance. One thing you don't want is a machine that is going to break when somebody actually needs it. It's going to, to ruin your brand uh, reputation and brand equity. If you are in a B2B environment, you're going to lose a lot of revenues as well. So we proactively read a lot of the uh, possible error data to, uh, to swap machines and to, and to improve maintenance. Um, the other thing to, to look at is if you innovate at the edge, innovate on things where you have some strength somewhere else, but technology can bring a strong spin to a new business model. So, I'm uh, going to show a couple of examples of technology-powered business model. This one is, again, on uh, augmented reality. This is how we have equipped our thousands of people around the world, Salesforce that needs to go and sell in, into the shop some of those B2B machines. Instead of bringing with them you know, paper carton mock-ups or the actual physical machine to see how, how much of a space it takes, now we do all with augmented reality. So you will see in context, in your shop, the machine being placed, and you talk with the, with, the, with, the, with the salesperson, and you actually put the order in directly. So uh, very simple way to use technology to empower uh, new business models. Uh, this is another one, which is about using uh, DNA data to personalize nutrition. Maybe a quick raise of hands. How many of you have you done uh, a DNA test, like 23andMe and, and similar? Yeah, actually, not too bad. You see, PNG people always ahead to, <laughs> to try things. Um, so this, this is an example where we are, trying, we are working together with one of the uh, companies, which is called Nutria, to, uh, to use DNA data to personalize dietary recommendations and putting together AI for recommendations with chatbots, but also a program where you stick for for a few weeks and, and months. So again, technology that is already out there, but how you make it work for your, uh, for your business model. Um, the last point of, of, the, of this, let's say, shortened recipe is the point about culture. And is, that is the last of the list, but definitely is one of the most important one. And is the one that a lot of people uh, forget or they think is going to come naturally. Uh, and when I say culture, it's really about everything on the, what is the reward system that you put in place, what, is the, uh, what are the skills that you're going to, uh, to bring into the company, what are the behaviors you're going to reward. And we've done a lot of work over time to fine tune uh, this aspect to, to try to be more successful. So um, one of the examples I'm going to show is this, uh, uh, the example of Barcelona, not too far from here. We have created uh, three years ago our global digital hub in, uh, in, in Barcelona, where we have now 40 nationalities, uh, around 30 average age. Lot, most of the people are actually new to the company, 80%. Uh, we took, I think now 60% of the people we, we hired in are actually coming from a startup. So they're also bringing a lot of very new ways of working to, to us, a lot of uh, uh, good diversity uh, as well. So definitely invest in 
building teams that are different from, uh, from, uh, from before. And that one thing that is important in, in doing that is to empower people that have the skills and have the knowledge to tell their story. The worst thing you can do is to hire very capable, passionate uh, startups in your company and, then, and then, them, then let them work as before. So this is, this is an example where we, we take our new uh, employees through a series of things, but also themselves, they self-produce videos for the overall company to train and diffuse uh, knowledge for the, for the other thousands of employees that we have around the world. So empower people to, uh, to do that. It's a, it's a great, uh, uh, it's great things to do and it gives a lot of results. Um, culture, also another, another big watch out, you cannot deploy culture. Don't buy in when consultants come in and they come with a culture deployment plan. You cannot deploy culture, I'm sorry. So the only thing you can do, you can set up the right ways for culture to be recognize for giving the right nudges to people when they do something good and, and reward when they do something good. So um, re really think in advance what are the parameters in the culture and in the, uh, in the, in the reward system that you're going to use the work for your, for your, for your case. Uh, with that, and without waiting for the second bell, uh, I'm going to <laughs> recap the, the, the recipe, six uh, ingredients, difficult recipe, try it at home, uh, call your friends uh, so maybe you can cook it together, but again, add some grain of salt, uh, which is really uh, the specific things that are important for your company, for the culture you need to operate in, and make sure you take the time to make it happen in a way that is uh, relevant. And with that, thanks a lot, and see you soon.